After spending the whole day testing and doing different exercises with the Apple Watch Ultra 3, I'm pretty sure this is my favorite Apple device of all time and this is the one I would get to track my heart rate during exercise if I didn't want to wear a chest strap. I did four different exercises, indoor cycling, outdoor cycling, running and weightlifting and for only one out of four of these it didn't do perfectly. And for the other three exercises I don't have much to complain about except maybe very small things. Now for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis and today we'll do an initial deep dive into the data analysis of the Apple Watch Ultra 3 and see see if it's any good for tracking your sports. We'll take a look at the heart rate tracking and the GPS tracking, so let's get started. And as regular viewers will know, I always start with easier exercises to track my heart rate and then move on to harder ones. And the easiest in my testing is indoor cycling, where there's not a lot of movement, not a lot of bumpiness and not a lot of tension on my arm. And in this overview right here, you can see that the Apple Watch Ultra 3 agrees almost perfectly with the reference device along the horizontal axis. So if the two agree, the point should be on or close to this blue line, and almost all points are on or close to the blue line. And the correlation, this R value up here, is almost perfect at a rounded value of 1.00. Now it cannot be higher than exactly one, so it's basically perfect with only four measurements deviating a tiny bit, and that could even be an issue with the reference. So overall, almost perfect agreement. But let's take a look at the session itself to see there's no dropouts in heart rate because that wouldn't show in this overview. Now this is that spinning session itself. So along the horizontal axis, we have the clock time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis with in blue green the reference and the Apple Watch Ultra 3 in red. And the red line is basically perfectly on top of the blue green line. So nothing to complain about here. There might've been one moment here where it lost the heart rate signal for a few seconds, but otherwise it's more or less perfect. So really good performance. And we can actually compare this performance to that of many other devices out there. And that's displayed in this overview right here. So for that, we are using that correlation R value we we're looking at before, which is along the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the better the agreement with the reference device, the more to the top right the devices are. And the Apple Watch Ultra 3 is among some of the best devices. But let's zoom in a little bit so we can read those labels better. And that's displayed right here. So these are just the devices with a correlation of 0.9 or higher, some of the best devices. And even amongst those, the Apple Watch Ultra 3 is one of the best performers. And it's basically all Apple Watches and some Huawei watches that are up here. So it's basically performing about the same as the Apple Watch Ultra 2, the Apple Watch Series 10, the Apple Watch Series 8, 9, etc. So all of them are doing really well. Apple just has some of the best heart rate tracking out there. And for indoor cycling, if you go with any of these models, you'll get amazing heart rate tracking, at least based on my testing. But let's now make things a bit more difficult and let's take a look at the results for running. I just finished my run, but before I get into the running results, if you want to support the channel, there's multiple ways of doing that. Of course, liking, subscribing would be amazing. But if you don't know how to make running plans and you want live guidance during your run, I recommend Runna, which is my preferred running app. And you can also become a YouTube member, which is the most direct way of supporting the channel. But back to the results. And here we have the results for that run that I did with, again, a really good correlation at 0 0.99, slightly lower. And we can all see that sometimes the points are a tiny bit away from the blue line. So here, maybe a few BPM difference. And also here, there were a few moments with some minor difference. But again, this is good enough. If you're basing your run on your heart rate, you're getting a reliable enough signal with the Apple Watch. But again, we need to check for dropouts. So here we have the run itself, where again, the red line of the Ultra 3 overlaps almost perfectly with the blue line. There's only one moment with a tiny bit of deviation, but there's also no clear dropouts, which is the most important thing, because with some Apple Watches in the past, I've had some signal loss before, and that doesn't appear to be the case with this initial test of the Ultra 3. Also, all my intervals were detected with no cadence lock, so I'm really happy with this performance. And we can again compare this to the competition. And here we have that overview. We again want the devices to be as far to the top right as possible, and the Apple Watch Ultra 3 is among some of the best performers. Let's zoom in a bit. 
So here we have that zoomed in view. So these are just the devices with a correlation of 0 0.9 or higher. And it's again pretty clear that the Apple Watches are some of the best performers out there. We have my retesting of the Apple Watch Ultra 2 in 2025, very close to the Ultra 3, also the Series 9, all of them are doing really well. So the Apple Watch Ultra 3 is definitely also recommended for running. I'm really happy with this performance. Only the Amazfit Helio strap when worn on the biceps did better. Otherwise, amazing performance. But now I wanna make things even more difficult and take a look at the results for cycling outside. And this is sometimes harder because there's a lot of bumpiness, but also more tension on my arms because I have to hold on to the handlebars. Now today we're gonna take a look at a road bike ride. So road bike rides typically are a little bit easier than a city bike ride because the angle of my arms with road biking tends to be a bit more optimal, at least based on my experience for heart rate tracking. But let's take a look. And the biking overview is again amazing. This is really some of the best performance we've seen. So Apple Watches, including the Apple Watch Ultra 3, are just doing really well. Again, a rounded correlation of 1.00. Let's quickly check for dropouts again and put these results into perspective. And then we're going to take a look at what is the most important test for the Apple Watch Ultra 3. Is it any good at weightlifting? But let's first finish up the biking section. So here we have the bike ride where we see very good agreement between the Polar H10 reference and the Apple Watch Ultra 3. No dropouts, basically nothing to complain about. I'm happy enough with this performance. Yes, maybe tiny details are lost, but this would change nothing about how I train or how I interpret my training results. And compared to the competition, this also looks really good. It's the best performer out of any device I've tested. Now, as I said, for other devices, this also includes city bike rides, which tend to be a bit harder. So I'll be doing more testing with the Apple Watch Ultra 3 also for city bike rides. But at first glance, if we zoom into just the best performing devices, it's doing as well, basically, or even a little bit better as the Apple Watch Ultra 3 retesting that I did but I suspect they're basically having the same performance. And my original testing of the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is also in this same area right here. So Apple Watches are just really good at heart rate tracking. And for some reason, I don't know why, Apple Watch Ultra seems to do a tiny bit better on me than the other models, but not the Apple Watch Ultra 1. I think we cannot conclude that, for instance, the Apple Watch Series 10 has worse heart rate tracking than the Apple Watch Ultra 3. There will be some error margin here, so it's really hard to make definitive conclusions, but all of them are just good enough. I'm really happy with this performance. But as I said, now comes the very hard exercise weightlifting. And this is hard because there's so much tension on my arm when lifting weights. And we've especially seen it being hard when I'm doing chest and triceps, which is the exercise I did today. So let's take a look at those results. And here we can see for the first time that there's more deviation from the blue line. Now I only trained for about half an hour or so, so we don't have as many data points, but we can see some deviations and the correlation is a little bit lower now, 0.96. And there might actually be dropouts because I would expect a few more points. So let's take a look at the session itself. Now looking at the session itself, this actually looks quite good. So in the beginning we had some dropout moments. So these two peaks right here weren't fully detected. We also see a too high heart rate was detected here. I'm actually curious to see if the Apple Watch Series 11 also detects a too high heart rate here. I don't have those results ready yet, so check out my review of the Apple Watch Series 11 for that. But overall, this is actually not bad. Most of the peaks were detected even right here in the beginning when I was doing bench press, which is typically very hard. Most of the peaks were at least partially correctly detected. Some of the peaks were missed right here, but only a little bit. And for some reason, a too high heart rate was detected here. This is a bit weird. Overall, pretty decent result though, especially for weightlifting, not perfect. And we can actually see that by comparing it to the competition, which is in this overview right here. So the Apple Watch Ultra 3 in red is doing pretty well. And if we zoom in a little bit, 
We can see it's close to some of the other Apple Watch that tested before, like the Apple Watch Ultra 1, the Apple Watch Ultra 2, the retesting of the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Here, for some reason that I cannot explain, some of the lighter Apple Watches did a bit better on me, but these actually did have some dropouts, if I remember correctly. For weightlifting or gym, actually devices worn in your ear are probably much better, like the Powerbeats Pro 2, but also the Apple AirPods Pro 3, as you will see in that review that I'm working on now that is actually my favorite gym device so if i were to track my heart rate in the gym with any device i'd probably go for the airpods pro 3 if i didn't want to wear a chest strap that is still the apple watch ultra 3 did pretty well so the heart rate tracking of the apple watch ultra 3 is basically very good except for maybe weightlifting which has some minor issues compared to the competition it's still very good but there are some minor issues but let's now take a look at the GPS tracking performance. So if you want to track your pace or your speed during your runs and your bike rides, that's actually quite important. I tested it during a run where I ran in a circle many, many times to see if those signals overlap very well. So the idea here is that if the signals overlap very well, there's a bigger chance that the GPS tracking performance is actually quite good. So let's take a look. Now, unlike the Apple Watch Series 11, the Apple Watch Ultra 3 actually has dual frequency GPS. And as you can see in my Apple Watch Series 11 video, that actually shows because the GPS tracking performance of the Ultra 3 does appear to be better. So here we have the run that I did. So I ran many circles right here in Park Belvedere in Vienna. And it just gave amazing performance, honestly, or at least it's amazingly consistent. So if we go along the run, there will always be some deviation where I actually ran, so maybe up to a meter. And in general, the deviation of the tracking of the Ultra 3 doesn't deviate a lot more than the actual running that I did. Now, I do think there might be some post-processing going on here where the original GPS signal is maybe smoothed out a little bit. But overall, the consistency between the signals is just really good. Now, the reason I think there might be some post-processing is because usually when I go around the corner right here, I then tuck in a little bit. So first I go up a little bit more and then I go back a tiny bit and run a bit closer to this area right here. But that also might just be the way that the signals are projected onto this map. The same way that I'm running through the bushes right here, according to the map. That might just be a projection issue and maybe everything should be shifted a tiny bit to the right, which would then also not make me overlap as much with this area right here. So overall, at least very consistent signals and also looking a bit better than the results I have for the Apple Watch Series 11, though that's also not terrible by any means. So based on this initial test, I'm very happy with the GPS tracking performance. Though there is that potential of smoothing going on, which then potentially has some unintended consequences. And that might also mean that the live speed or pace that you see is not exactly identical to the one that's shown in the final process map. But that's hard for me to test. I cannot really save that data that is shown on the watch itself. Overall though, I'm really happy with this performance. Many watches struggle a lot more and the consistency between these signals is just very good. Now I'm very curious to see when I also do my cycling test over many days, if the results are still as consistent, but at least for this initial test, this is a good early indication because especially in this area here where we have a big wall here, many devices struggle and that doesn't appear to be the case for the Apple Watch Ultra 3. But I'm also very curious to hear about your experiences with different Apple Watch Ultras. Do they give good GPS tracking for you or not? So for all exercises except potentially weightlifting, the heart rate tracking of the Apple Watch Ultra 3 was basically amazing. I'm quite happy with its performance and even for weightlifting, it wasn't that bad, except for maybe two or three moments with some dropouts. But overall, it's still one of the best devices out there when it comes to heart rate tracking. Now, if I were a regular gym goer and that was my main exercise, I would probably actually choose to get the new AirPods Pro 3, which are basically the king of the gym. And you can see that in this video right here after I finished that. But otherwise, I'm super happy with the performance of the Apple Watch Ultra 3. And also the initial GPS tracking test looked really good. Now there might be some smoothing going on there, but otherwise it was really good performance. 
I'll be curious to see what happens when I also test it for cycling and I'll cycle the same route many times and we can then check the consistency between those signals. But for running, I was generally quite happy. So if you're considering getting an Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Ultra 3 is actually an amazing choice, but also previous generations did really well. And I actually think it might be that Apple is continuing to tweak the software of the heart rate tracking to make it even better with the same sensor. The only thing that they can still potentially improve is the weightlifting dropout. So being able to detect your heart rate, even when there's a lot of tension on your wrists. Now I'll be doing a full review of the Apple Watch Ultra 3 in the next week or two. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe. And I made a separate video on the Apple AirPods 3, which turned out to be amazing for gym goers. Though for running, I had some issues. And I also reviewed the Apple Watch Series 11. Now those videos will come out within about 12 or so hours of this video. So stay tuned for those. It might be when you're watching this that they're already out. So check the channel for those. Now, if you do end up getting the Apple Watch Ultra 3, the Apple Watch Series 11, a whoop strap, an eight sleep pot or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, you want to save some money and at the same time support the channel. There's different affiliate links in the description below, all of which support the channel, none of which cost you any extra and many provide the best discount possible. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Apple Watch Ultra 3, check out this video on the new Apple Watch sleep score. I completely dissected it and you might be interested in knowing how it works or this video on the Aidsley pod.